294 active mods. At least that's what Vortex is telling me. Some of those mods might not make it into this video. Many of them are bug or engine fixes, patches, or contain quests or new worlds that I don't want to spoil for the new story. Unlike the Dawnbreakers mod list, I've actually taken the time to organize this one properly. My goal for this mod list was to turn Skyrim into a place where the characters would feel dwarfed by the world around them. A place where a hero can slay a god and still get lost in the riffraff. To this end, I focused on making the cities bigger, and on improving specifically game mechanics and visuals related to the new cast. If you watch the Dawnbreaker saga, you'll see some familiar mods, and many new arrivals. With that, let's start up a new game with Skyrim Unbound Reborn, and get into building a world from the ground up. We begin with a blank slate. Welcome to Vanilla SSE. Now I go against conventional modding wisdom and add in my reshade immediately, just to show you that even without a million mods, just a nice reshade will make it look better immediately. I did a whole video on how to tweak this specific preset, so I'll link that video in the description. Next, Static Mesh Improvement Mod, aka SMIM, since it has a bunch of mesh tweaks and textures. I've gone with vanilla barrel textures because, weirdly, I like them. Vivid Landscapes All-in-One comes next. Along with Vivid Landscapes Snow, which I obviously couldn't show off in Falkreath of all places. Then, really blended roads and covered bridges. This makes the wild areas feel a little less wild, which I'll balance out later. Next, Skyrim Flora Overhaul, or SFO, 2, Summer Edition. I've also added in Reach Tree Replacer, since the new story starts in mid-spring, rather than autumn. To balance out the bridges, I've added in Origins of Forest, with a performance patch because I'm not that crazy. And Folkvanger Grass. I did go in and tweak which mod controlled which terrain types in Vortex, that way I can keep the green rift and white run tundra that SFO2 adds. Then Mari's Flora, so that the harvestable plants hold up with the smoothness of the rest of the foliage. Next, no gracias, less grass and such, and insignificant object remover to squeeze a few more frames out of this massively overgrown spring forest. Now we get into weather, and it's back to the old classics. Obsidian weathers and true storms, patched in a get-along sweater, of course. To spice things up, we've got a few effects. Wonders of weather for raindrops and shooting stars. Rain, ash, and snow shaders for lightweight water drops. And morning fogs for morning fogs. It's spring in Skyrim and evaporation is a thing. I've also added in Real Rain SE because True Storm's raindrops at night with this mod list was getting a little bit overwhelming. Next, Cathedral Waters and Northern Shores, which actually affects rivers too. And finally, an overhaul to East March. Badlands Volcanic Tundra Textures by yours truly, and Volcanic Tundra Heatwave Effects by Fading Signal. I'm using the Yellowstone variant of Badlands, though I made several more. I'm not sure which took longer, making the mod or deciding which version to use. Now that we've got the foundations laid, let's get our character and NPCs looking as clean as the foliage with a change of face and race menu. Our first mod here is high poly vanilla hair with bedhead textures. For a bit more variety, because I like unique looking characters, I've also added in Apache hairs 
and given it the salt and wind textures to better match the vanilla hairs. Now that our hair is looking nice, let's overhaul faces with Wind Song Immersive Character Overhaul, and fix our eyeballs with Eye Normal Map Fix. I added in star side eyes as well, just in case I need them. At least one of my characters has tattoos, so I've put in Community Overlays 1 and 2, as well as Dunmer Overlays. And in case I get tired of this Crash Test Nord, I could also turn him into a Crash Test Khajiit. Or an Argonian. Hmm. On second thought, back to Nord we go. I also added in beards later on, but forgot to grab footage of it, so here is Jarl Balgruf as a model. Speaking of Whiterun, now we get into the meat and potatoes of this mod list, the city overhauls. Let's start here with Capital Whiterun Expansion, and Dark's Whiterun Market to make Whiterun into a slightly lighter weight trade center in a war-torn province. Next, Solitude. I'm using Better City's Solitude to give it a more populated feeling without making it too posh. Solitude Exterior Add-on for a bit more interest around the entry. And Solitude Docks. I've really focused on dock towns in this list since one of the characters will be a pirate. Speaking of outlaws, let's move across the province to Riften. I've expanded the capital of theft in Skyrim with the Rift and Fishing Shack. I can't not after watching Couch Warrior's Passage. Rift and Docks Overhaul. And Rift and Extension, Southwoods District. I haven't touched the main floor of the city's interior, but have extended the interest above and below the eye line of the good people of Riften with Riften Down and Deadly Shadows in Riften. Now both thieves and assassins can get a bird eye view of the situation. Meanwhile, on the other side of the province, Markarth gets a lightweight facelift with Second Era Markarth. Nobles, Markarth, and Dwemer textures. And Dwemer pipework reworked. Windhelm, on the other hand, gets a major Heavy Burns inspired change that I'm still surprised actually runs on my machine. Starting with the Windhelm bridge fix to add some stairs, we get right into capital Windhelm expansion. and the Grey Quarter expansion. All overhauled with Noble's Windhelm textures. I've added a bit of extra foliage on top with Leaf Eater's Windhelm trees to give it a slightly overgrown and bleak look. Speaking of bleak, let's move on to the minor cities, starting with Winterhold. I'm using Clef J's Winterhold this time around to make it feel a bit more weather-beaten and thematically similar to Windhelm. I'm also using the other big college mod, Immersive College of Winterhold, specifically because of the cactus. You'll see. For Dawnstar, we have the great city of Dawnstar, which is pretty self-explanatory and makes Dawnstar look the way a port city should look. I say, living miles away from any coast. <laughs> Speaking of great cities and towns, I'm also using Soldier of War's Iverstead. Rorikstead. Mixwater Mill. Look, I'm a sucker for turf roofs, okay? And Old Holden.
Moving back to more major cities, I'm using Cato's Fogwreath, which gives the city and the valley a bit more decoration without being overbearing about it. And the lesser known Morthal Overhaul 2, which adds some protection while still feeling suitably swampy. Last, we have Roderick's Dragon Bridge, which... I mean... Look at it! For the rest of the minor settlements on the mainland, I've gone with Arthmore's Kynes Grove. Shorestone. and Carthwaston. They aren't the most ostentatious small settlement mods out there, but I wanted the focus to be on the larger cities for this one. Don't worry, there will be a series in the future that gives more love to the wilder places. Moving over to the Isle of Solstheim, we arrive at quaint Raven Rock. And journey on over to the underdog mod, Expanded Telmithrin. And Old Faithful, Greater Skull Village. Of course, we're not done back on the mainland. It wouldn't be one of my mod lists without including the infamous House of Troubles by Couch Warrior. Along with a few out-of-the-way places to bunker down with hidden hideouts of Skyrim. For Fort Dawnguard, I've decided to use the sister mod to Immersive College of Winterhold, Immersive Fort Dawnguard. On the other side of the skirmish, I am still using Castle Vokalhar Rebuilt, but it's kinda hard to get footage of that without playing through the whole dang Dawnguard quest. We'll just have to see that one later. Speaking of forts, I'll also be using Tactical Valtheim. Skybound Underhang Camp. You can probably already see a mod coming into play that I'll talk about later. Skyhaven Temple Gardens, because I can't not. And Red Eagle Reborn. For reasons. Finally, the last of the building mods, we have the Scarlet, along with several patches for the city mods already mentioned, which I'll link to in the description. Now that we have the exteriors looking sharp, let's work on what things look like when we head inside. For farmhouse interiors, I've used True Farmhouse Wood 1K, which you might have seen on a few exteriors as well, Clever Charf's Farmhouse Floor, Peltapalooza, and Ragnarok. I've also got rustic cooking in there too, because who doesn't like a nice stew? I've given the two Civil War palaces a bit of a special treatment with JK's Palace of the Kings, and JK's Blue Palace to make them match their cities a little bit better. For the cave interiors, I've gone with a Frankenfolder mishmash of undergrounds, caves, mines, and Nordic ruins, as well as nobles, stone, and ice caves. Frankenfolder because Vivid Landscapes is also controlling some of the rocks and the exteriors of Nordic ruins.
Now that we've got the cities populated and the interiors decorated, let's work on arming, armoring, and clothing everyone. Including our test Nord, of course. This won't include every armor set I'm adding into the game, but it'll cover the big ones. First, Skyrim is cold, even in spring. Winter may have come and gone, but winter is coming cloaks is here to stay. Common clothes and armors will make sure that the common folk will have something a bit more unique to wander around in. This also includes some updated versions of the armors from Brigandage, so the bandits will be looking suitably bandity as well. Armor Variants Expansion adds a few more armor variants to the game. Smexier Vanilla Guards adds more regional variations to guard armors, and includes patches for some of the mods already mentioned. I'm also using the No Guards version of Civil War Equipment Organization, specifically so it doesn't conflict with this mod. Warmth Light Armor Replacer gives sleeves to the vanilla light armors because Skyrim is cold. Warmonger Armory adds a few new armor sets, as well as the ability to belt mount Dragon Priest masks instead of wearing them on your face. Immersive Armor says ever the classic, but I've also augmented it this time with realistic armors replaced by x Tudo, so that I have a couple of Nord War UA's armors in place of, say, the Boiled Mudcrab armor. Veteran Dragon Plate is a new one that I might look forward to using in the future. I mean, just look at it. Arma Thalmoris is what I'll be using for my Thalmor armor overhaul of choice. And I've accidentally turned Crash Test Nord into Bucky Bjarn's Winter Soldier. We're gonna keep going and hope we don't run into Shore, Dwemer Man, or Captain Cyrodiil along the way. Woodframe Backpacks is making another appearance. as well as bandolier, bags, and pouches. Modular clothing system is back once again because I've fallen in love with how, well, modular it is. Face Masks of Skyrim is of course a must-have for anyone traveling for any length of time in the ash wastes of Soul Slime. Practical Female Armors is still here, by the way. For weapons, we have Lean Wolf's Better Shaped Weapons. Believable War Hammers. And Real Bows to give some of the weapons a more realistic shape. Unique Uniques does what it says on the tin, makes some of the vanilla weapons more unique. Royal Armory is new in this load order, and adds weapons suitable for the station of some NPCs. Heavy Armory, the classic, which adds halberds, spears, short swords, and other expanded weapon types to the available arsenal. Speaking of arsenals, Dawnguard Arsenal not only adds weapons, but also some serious sun spells for optimal smiting of undead scum. But vampires aren't the only things in Skyrim one might be smiting or seeing. Let's get into creatures. First, some tiny ones for the local alchemist. Rallies, butterflies, and moths. And high-res dart wings. Hag Raven 2K, so that Granny Melka looks a bit more lively. Bellyaches HG Dragon Replacer Pack and Splendor Dragon Variants for more Splendiferous Dragons. I also plan to add in Bellyaches new dragon species in the future, but only after we've revealed the Dragonborn. Dynamic Cart Horses for better looking draft horses. Light Horses for nicer looking palfreys. and Beyond Skyrim horses to give Cyrodiil's horses matching quality. Holy cows! For cow reasons.
diverse werewolves collection, and more werewolves. Because I had to. Carriage guards for protecting carts, horses, and travelers from said roving bands of werewolves. And finally, flying crows. Because nothing says ominous and urban like a murder of birds that are more intelligent than some humans. You know what crows like? Shinies. And there's nothing more shiny than JS armored circlets. I've also found the replacer for it that replaces the vanilla circlets with these sparkly bad boys. Left-handed rings adds even more options for your hand-based shinies. And actually usable Ring of Namira makes Namira's ring only activate when you're crouching, which is actually usable. Dynamic dungeon loot adds even more shinies and mixes up the leveled list, so there's a bit more luck involved in dungeon delving. Perfect for pirates. Having high res to the bugs, I might as well high res the rest of my alchemy ingredients, right? HD animal and creature drops takes care of most of that, along with spider egg and egg sac retexture, HD pondfish, and WizKids Hagraven Clutter and Bones to take care of the taproot, among other things. Finally, enhanced blood textures. Just because. Now that we've got things looking sharp, let's focus on what we can do with it. Ordinator perk overhaul gives us way more skill options than vanilla, and seems to play nicely with everything else on this list. Summer Mist enchantments gives us more enchantments to play with. Well, the Apocalypse and Triumvirate spell packages add more variety to our spellcasting options. Hunterborn will let us collect shiny eyeballs for Granny Melka, and some more meat-based alchemy ingredients. While Campfire will keep us warm while we dress our kills. And what's a good campsite without a good tent? Tentapalooza has options, in case you fancy a nice yurt. Kuyi's campfire backpacks turns the fur backpacks hide side out and gives them a more wax-sealed, weatherproof appearance. Which, as someone who's been outside in the Rocky Mountains in a rainstorm, I definitely appreciate. Ars Metallica will let us smelt down our random loot for scrap metal. And Honed Metal will let us commission blacksmiths to shape that metal for us rather than doing it ourselves. Signature Equipment will also give our gear a boost as we get used to using it. Speaking of which... Draw will let us put our newly enhanced gauntlets to good use punching people's lights out. And Lawbringer will let us take the good fight to places like Skybound Underhang Camp, and in Gorge Robber's Gorge. Poisoning Extended will help in this endeavor, making it much easier to quickly apply multiple doses of toxins to your weapon of choice.
Spellsword adds yet another mechanic for those who have mastered the art of casting with their weapons. Predator Vision adds Night Eye and Hunter Vision spells, as well as overhauling Werewolf and Vampire Night Vision so you can find your enemies in the dark before they find you. One with Nature takes care of some of the issues with foes in the wild, letting you customize the dispositions of wildlife to be as realistic or roleplay as you like. And speaking of roleplay, barely used Vanilla Actors Recycle Project, aka Boovarp, will give you more options to interact with folks like Arvel the Not So Swift. Help me down and I'll show you. You won't believe the power the Nords have hidden there. Does it look like I can move? You have to cut me down first. For that price? Sure. It's coming loose. I can feel it. Yes, sir. All right, then. Here you go. Oh, and keep it quiet. This stuff isn't exactly easy to get a hold of at these prices, if you catch me drift. Hmm. Auto Walk will take you anywhere you want to go if you need to go stretch after all that conquering and convincing. And convenient horses will make sure that you always have a noble steed with you on your journey. If you want one, that is. You can also pick a better name for your mount with Name Your Horse. Winter Sun is the perfect addition for Skyrim's Devout, adding in boons and powers as a reward to the faithful. And Thieves Guild requirements make sure that Brynjolf doesn't mistake your paladin type for a pickpocket. And embrace the teachings yes, of the handmaid. Did you need time. something? No, no, Maramal. We talked about this. I also have Moonlight Tales for those who are more inclined toward the beastie side of Skyrim. And better vampires, just in case. Now it's time to chat up the innkeeper with immersive speechcraft. How can I argue with that? Take a break with Dovakin Relaxes too. And go to bed with, well, go to bed. It's going to be a long day of learning new animations in the morning. Don't worry, we're almost done. We'll start our day with reasonable movement speed and NPCs run and walk at your pace. Smooth running animations, jog, sprint, and jump will take care of our basic movement. Better jumping will let you jump even when you're dashing. And EVG conditional idols will make sure everyone knows when you're out of breath. Among other things. Third person dual wield animation fix will make us look less dorky when we're dual wielding. YY Mystic Knight will make us look more confident with one handed weapons. And Zweihander will give our two-handed users a bit more sass. I've paired this with Leviathan's normal attacks for a slightly smoother swing, 
but kept vanilla power attacks because I like the power spin. Better player combat expressions lets you put on your war face when you draw your weapon, and only when you draw your weapon. Feral gives beast races, vampires, and werewolf player characters a different unarmed stance, ready to claw the face off anyone foolish enough to stand in their way. Fall rolling animation lets you take long falls like a parkour master. And stronger swimming animation lets you swim like you actually know what you're doing. After all that, it's time to take a seat with Take a Seat. And take a deep breath, because we're done. That's it. That's the mod list. More or less. Like I said, I didn't include quest mods, new lands, or various patches and bug fixes, because if I had, this would have fried my voice even more and been highly spoilerific to the story. In spite of that, I hope you enjoyed wandering through this new version of Tamriel with Bucky Bjarns, and I'm looking forward to bringing more story your way very soon. Take care, and see you next time. <laughs>